Hi, my name is Michaela Tubbs, and today I am presenting on behalf of the Honors Program from research that I did in my genetics class last semester with the help of Brian Camisi and Heaven Cole. Um, the purpose of this assignment was to do some research on genetic diseases and then look up scholarly articles and just report back on what we found. And our group, we took a different route. Instead of looking up diseases, we wanted to instead look up just an interesting genetic characteristic that is exhibited in an organism. And so the topic of our research, um, the title is sea slug switch. And we wanted to do some research on the interesting sexual polymorphism that sea slugs, also known as nudibranches in the phyla mollusca and class gastropoda exhibit, which is known as simultaneous hermaphroditism. And simultaneous hermaphroditism is a system in which the individuals are reproductively male and female at the same time. Um, there is also another type of hermaphroditism known as sequential, which that is where the organisms will, um, they can become, they can fill both roles of male and female throughout their life, depending on influencing factors within their environments. Um, but simultaneous hermaphrodites actually exhibit both roles at the same time. So these organisms can produce both sperm and eggs and can impregnate another individual and also be impregnated at the same exact time. And this is known as um, bidirectional reproduction. And as you can see in the top left corner of the poster, um, this is an image of a genus of sea slugs called Cyphopteron. And here in the picture, there's you can see the, um, the translucent jelly-like parts. And these are actually the male's reproductive organs or the penises. And so they are both um, populating at the same exact time. And so they are both performing the male roles while in turn also performing the female roles. And there are some factors that influence this type of sexual polymorphism. And one of those factors are environmental factors such as density, like population density, um, temperature of the water, the available the availability of their food, the amount of predators, and the parasites that they encounter. Um, sea slugs also have internal factors that motivate them to maximize the success of either sexual role. So depending on their environments and mentally the roles that they see best fit that would be the most successful. Um, those are the ones that they tend to choose at that given time in population. And also sexual isolation will increase their eagerness to mate after a period of their isolation. And this is what drives the male role more than the female role. And so each the time between each mating occurrence, um, the more time that there is between each, um, that gives the males more time to replenish their seminal fluid. But they, even though th this sexual isolation will drive the male role, they will also act as the female role. And there are also social factors that d go into determining which role they prefer and so if if one organism is removed from a group then the next largest organism will convert to that removed organism sex almost to then claim the alpha role and so whenever sea slugs mate they tend to exhibit um protandry within their life and that is um, the starting out with the male function, and then as they mature, they will acquire the female function, and then they will use them simultaneously. Um, 
During copulation, some males in the sea, sea slug species, um, they will discard their male parts after sex and generate new ones, which allows for more frequent sex in dense competitive environments. And for the females, mating is rough on them, but the organisms will still choose to take on that role more than necessary because it is believed that sperm can be absorbed as additional nutrients for the female and having multiple male sperm can stimulate better egg production for the females. And males will inject their prostate fluid near the female's brain. Like th they will actually stab their male organ into the female's head and that gives the females nutrients. And it's also believed that it will phase the females to not want to mate again as quickly, which will then give the male sperm more time to fertilize the female. And there are some costs and benefits to this type of sexual reproduction. Um, one of the costs is that transferring sperm and other nutrients is optimal only when mating is mating frequency is high and sperm competition is strong so if the sea slugs live in environments where there aren't that many other organisms to mate with then they generally won't choose to exhaust their resources on just any one female they want to make sure that they're giving their resources to the best fit female and the energy that is required for the male and female is about equal but certain factors as listed previously help the sea slugs to determine how to allocate their ejaculates if the transfer and or production is too costly um another cost which also has actually proven to be a benefit for this species is that the slugs can get stuck together during mating and the male must be chewed off and um, because that the males can regenerate their male parts it doesn't exactly affect them and also even without their male parts they can still act as female so being hermaphrodites is actually a valuable ad adaptation and the love dart that I mentioned earlier where males inject the females with their prostate fluid, it is costly to the females rate of producing offspring because they get phased by this love dart that makes them want to copulate less. So then they have less success of producing offspring. And also whenever the males detach their male parts um, the sperm is actually able to continue to be inserted into the female and so this will then increase their fertilization success and they have um, spiky barbs on them that are that also can be used to scrape out other male sperm to make sure that they have the success in fertilization and reproduction um, not much is actually known about the genetics of the simultaneous hermaphroditism within these sea slugs because, because it is hard to distinguish between the cutoff of the male and the female roles. Um, but there has been some progress made on one of the, spe the sex on one sex specific transcription factor known as MAB3 and that controls male sex and it's required for specification of male germ cells to maintain and regenerate the testes and male, ex male accessory reproductive organs. So whenever they do discard their penis, they need this sex determining gene to help them then reproduce that organ. And they also exhibit the double sex DSX gene, which is seen in another model organism um, of fruit flies. And to 
from what we got from our research and reading other peer-reviewed articles, um, there's still much to be done to fully understand the unique and fascinating form of reproduction in terms of the genetics. And it is believed that many organisms do this in order to maximize their chances of successful reproduction and as due to the limited ability of mates. And also they have low mobility and low population density. And because of this, it favors the evolution of the sexual polymorphism. And here in the middle, I just attached a picture of the sea bunny sea slug because it is a common one as it looks like a little bunny and they're just very cute. And all sea slugs are, they're very beautiful and vibrant and colorful and there's just so much to be learn from them and I hope you enjoyed my presentation and that you feel like you've learned a little bit more about these incredibly fascinating creatures. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.